What's good people? Thank you as always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. So I wasn't able to go to Amir Khan, uh, Terence Crawford press conference today, which is a shame. We're talking about 20 minutes away from my house. Um, something came up, which is a massive shame. I really wanted to see Terence Crawford. I've um, met and interviewed Amir Khan a few times. I really just wanted to have a chat with Crawford, even get a photo. Um, pound for pound number two on your doorstep and you don't see him. These chances don't come around often so um, gutted I weren't able to see Terence Crawford. What I was able to do though today was sit down and watch a Coogan Cassius Eddie Hearn special. What does Coogan call these interviews now? I think he always says something like Eddie Hearn Raw or Frank Warren Raw and Uncut, something like that. But I think it was like 35, 45 minutes. And look, I find these interviews fascinating and I love them and long may they continue. It's weird, I always read, um, I don't know, 20 or 30 comments on the videos and you get people saying stuff like, oh, shit interview, or Coogan asked that question, Coogan asked this question. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, let's just appreciate what we're getting. Coogan has never once said he is a journalist. He's not gonna ask all the questions we want answering. Look, he's never ever fucking said he's Jeremy Paxman, for fuck's sake, but he's trying his hardest and I appreciate the effort. I mean, look at some of the American promoters and look at some of the biggest equivalents to IFL, so Fight Hub, Fight Hype, Seconds Out, they never get sit downs with, Oscar, Al, Bob Arum, Kathy Duva. So we should be lucky that we get Coogan being able to give us fantastic insight with Frank and Eddie. Anyway, enough of licking Coogan's ass. I found that interview fascinating. I, I really did. I enjoyed um, every minute of it. And the bit I wanted to get to was the Dillian White section, right? So I think that's 16 minutes in if you've not watched it. That's when he starts talking about Dillian White. And it's very briefly. And I think he almost is annoyed, it seems that way anyway, about what Dylan White said in terms of getting a low ball offer and the offer being way less than Chisora's money, which I don't know if it's true. Eddie Hearn almost had a smirk on his face as though that's obviously not true. And I think Coogan pushed him and said, okay, was it 60-40? Was that the split? And he said, you're not a million miles away. So let's, for argument's sake on this video, say that the offer was 70-30, or even 75, 25, right? Those, those, I think, make more sense, right? I think that's the kind of split that he probably got, probably got. I don't think it was 80, 20, or some people suggesting on the internet, 85, 15, I do, no, it's not that bad. No fucking way is AJ that stingy. And AJ is stingy, people, he ain't that stingy. I normally don't agree with everything Eddie Hearn says. I, I'm not gonna put myself in a hater category because I think he's done amazing stuff for British boxing. But sometimes I do feel like we get this car salesman pitch. I don't think he's covered himself in glory with this Wilder situation and I guess releasing to the world what the offers are. I don't think that, as much as I enjoy that stuff, I don't think us as the general public should know um, the details of a fight offer. I, don't, I just don't think we should. He even mentioned on that video that next week he might release or will release and I think he said he's going to do it with Coogan, the offers made to uh, White, Wilder and Fury, right? Again, I don't think he should do that. Um, look, we love it, but I think his back's against the wall. And I think Joshua and him are getting a lot of pressure right now. So I think they just want to release to the world what those offers are. You can see my thumbnail. On the thumbnail, I said Eddie Hearn is right. Here is why I think Eddie Hearn's right. And look, I'm going to contradict myself a lot here, especially when you think of what I said in the past videos. And the reason I'm going to contradict myself is because I'm fucking human and that's what we do. In boxing, there's always been an A and a B side. I'm not trying to say it's correct, but there's always been an A and a B side. Someone's always the big dog. Someone's always the bigger draw. It's very, very rare where you get two superstars who are exactly the same aligned and they just do a 50-50 split. In fact, I can't think of any fight, and I'm literally casting my mind back, where there are two guys where they're exactly aligned in terms of power. The one that springs to mind is maybe the second Eubank Ben fight. I almost feel like that might have been a 50 50 split because both of those guys at the time were both quite powerful. The one that could have been when you think of a big super fight was obviously Pacquiao Mayweather. Pacquiao had lost. But if they fought when they were supposed to have fought, maybe four or five years earlier, that could have been a 50 50 fight between two big superstars. When you think of the four boxers in question for a potential fight in April, so what, AJ, Wilder, Fury, and White, AJ is so much more the A-side in this equation, it's scary. Like, he is as big as an A-side as you're going to get when it comes to facing either of those other guys, right? So if he faces White, Wilder, Fury, he is the A-side, and it's such a dominant A-side it's scary. And this isn't just me being an AJ fanboy. This isn't me being Nigerian like AJ. This is me just spitting facts. 
AJ is the A side. Go and look at the pay-per-view numbers. Go and look at the ticket sell. Anything, any stat you want to look at, AJ will be number one. And I don't know if, or I don't think that the other guys accept that. And they should because they know the game. The game is A side versus B side. It's always been that. This isn't nothing new. So considering that we know AJ's the A side, and I think we can all admit that, it made me think about what Dylan White said in terms of low ball offer. Again, we're going to guess, and this is all guess work right now, to say that he, he got, at worst, a 75-25 offer in terms of a split, right? Um, at best, 70-30, but I'm guessing around 75-25. Who is the biggest ego in the history of this sport who's the biggest ego you can think of like think right now there's a couple that spring to my mind the first one is prince nassim Mohammed. the second one is floyd mayweather that is the guy that springs to my mind of having the biggest ego there is like i can't imagine being around a negotiating table and listening to floyd when someone says okay we're going to give you this and this i can't even picture it right we're talking about the guy that's made the most money in boxing the biggest ego and he deserves it because he's unbeaten there was a time when Floyd wasn't the A-side. I mean, we all think of Floyd in terms of his latter career. There was a time when Floyd was the B-side. And the B-side by a stretch, right? He was that. Floyd took on Oscar De La Hoya, who was definitely the A-side. Oscar is what AJ and Canelo are now. Oscar was everything, right? Um, at the time, five weight world champion. Just Oscar was Oscar. Floyd was Floyd, though, right? So Floyd took on Oscar. What was Floyd's record when he took on Oscar? Floyd's record, I think, and, and I'm, I think it was 37 and 0. So I'm guessing it was 13, 14 fights ago. It was 37 and 0, Floyd. He was a four weight world champion. 37 and 0, four weight world champion. He wanted to fight Oscar. Oscar was the man. Oscar, again, Oscar's AJ, right? Oscar was the man. Everyone loved Oscar. Oscar was that, that dollar check, right? You fight Oscar, you've made it, you're done, you've, you've made it. He wanted that fight. Badly. And he reasonably wanted that fight, not just because it would take him to become a five-wit world champion, but he wanted that fight because he knows it's almost like what's that film where I can't remember it is where you chop the guy's head off and you take all his power. That's what would happen. He fights the superstar, beats the superstar, he would become the superstar. Hence why his name changed to money after. And that's true, right? Because Floyd beat Oscar and then Floyd never ever went below 25 million again. He became that guy. Um, and go and look at what he got before that fight. But he became that guy after that fight. What split, I don't know if you guys know this, but what split did Floyd take to fight Oscar? Floyd, four-weight world champion, 37-0, unbeaten. 70-30 split. 70-30 split. It was a pot of $80 million. Oscar got 56, I think. Floyd got 24. My maths aren't that great, but that's a 70-30 split. Floyd Mayweather, 37-0, four-weight Four weight world champion, four weight world champion, said, you know, I'll take that 70 30 split. Fuck me. Yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, Floyd took a 70 30 split. Trust me, he wasn't offered a 70 30 split. He's probably offered something like a 85 15 or even an 80 20 split. He probably negotiated his way up to a 70 30 split. Floyd Mayweather. Now, I'm guessing that's probably very similar. Not the similar in terms of money, monetary value, but it's a very similar split to what Dillian White has kind of laughed and noble offer to what I, I guess Deontay Wilder has kind of laughed and said, fuck off, I want 50-50. Tyson Fury is now saying, I want 50-50. So it's okay for Floyd to take a 70-30 split against what he clearly knows is the A-side. Floyd, Floyd, the most egotistical boxer, in fact, the most egotistical sportsperson ever, is okay to accept a 70-30 split. But some of these other boxers are like, no, it's, it's low ball money. Oh, the offer's disgraceful. Want 50-50? No. I, no. I'm sorry. I, no. And what these fighters are doing is almost putting pressure on AJ and Eddie to do something that doesn't normally happen in boxing. Doesn't happen. Um, I've been following this sport for so many years. And believe you me, I've done a bit of research before i done this video. It doesn't happen. The A-side always takes the chunk. But these guys are making it out like what AJ and Eddie are doing is ungodly not supposed to do it doesn't happen look at the look at the look at the bloody example i just gave you floyd oscar floyd oscar done it pacquiao oscar done it happens all the time happens all the time are you gonna tell me that floyd mayweather 
I, even at the time, four weight world champion, 37 and 0, pound for pound number one wasn't as big as Deontay Wilder, Fury, or Dillian White. But Floyd can accept it. But these other guys are like, no, well, this isn't fair. We, we deserve more. No, you don't. No, you don't deserve more. You, do de you definitely don't deserve 50 50. You definitely don't deserve 50 50 because that's just not how it works. And again, I'm not saying this as an AJ ask us because I done a video about AJ just three days ago saying, look, AJ needs to make these fights happen. But fuck that. He needs to stick to his guns. He needs to stick to his guns because these splits don't happen. Um, if you're the A side, you're the A side for a reason. You're the A side for a reason. He gets 90,000 people in stadiums. His pay per view numbers are something like 1.5 million Klitschko, 1.1 million Povetkin, 1.2 million Joseph Parker. They can't compete with that. They can't compete with that. Um, so, yeah, that's my um, thoughts on the situation. I almost feel like the reward isn't just about the paycheck you get for fighting, AJ, whatever that split is. It's what you get after. What you get after. Look what Floyd got after. Look what Pacquiao got after. And Pacquiao was a superstar before fighting Oscar in terms of what he had done. I think it was a five or six weight world champion before Oscar. B. Oscar became a superstar. Same thing happened to Floyd. And the same thing will happen to Dillian White, Fury and Wilder if they roll the dice and beat Joshua. If they beat Joshua, they become superstars. If they moan about splits, then it ain't going to happen.